So uh, again, we want to welcome you to this uh, City Club special forum, and uh, our greetings go to those present in the room, especially those who are guests. And there's a lot of great guests out there in the audience today. And uh, obviously, we hope that you join the City Club in future activities and our ongoing civic dialogue. Uh, just a quick note, on January 21st, which is tomorrow, uh, the City Club new leaders welcome, uh, welcomes Joe Marinucci, who I worked with at the City of Cleveland, and he is the president and CEO of the Downtown Cleveland Alliance. We also have Ned Hill, this is shaping up to be a great panel discussion, uh, Dean of the Maxine Goodman Levine College of Urban Affairs at CSU, and Cleve Ricksecker, Executive Director of Capital Crossroads of Columbus, and they will discuss the state of downtown, very topical. Um, also next Friday, January 29th, uh, the City Club will host Ronald Berkman, who is the new president of Cleveland State University, Go Vikings. Uh, for more information about the forums here at the City Club, uh, please refer back to your printed program, which everyone has a copy in front of them. And if you wish to make reservations or order a CD or DVD of today's program, which I didn't know was available to all of us, <laughs> which is great, I'll order one right now, if that's cool. Uh, please call 1-888-223-6786 or 216-621-0082 and connect with me afterwards. I'll take orders from everybody and give them to the City Club. Um, now we'd like to turn a return to our traditional City Club question and answer. I believe uh, Carrie's got a microphone, so if there's any... You have slides for this, too. I do indeed. We have slides for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a slide master. Don't be afraid. I know there's some good questions out there. We, won't, we may bark, but we won't bite. How about that? My question is this. Um, being someone who works in the private industry, whenever I travel and come back to Cleveland, I, I'm be honest, I'm very disappointed in what I see and also the, at the pace of the progression. I think there is progression, but it seems to be going at a very slow pace. My question is this, how do you actually, how do you actually recruit people from the private industry, private industry to actually, I guess, volunteer and pick up some of these government jobs? Because to your point, I don't really think that governments create jobs. I think that it's the private entrepreneurs that really take the risk. But it seems that our government officials, they don't necessarily take those risks that we need. So my question to the panel is, what strategies or what advice would you give government in terms of recruiting or attracting private industries into government official roles? Well, I can talk to that from my personal perspective. I was a CFO of a tech company here in town before I was uh, announced as the tech star for the city of Cleveland under Mayor Campbell. And I, I had to give her great kudos to bring in a, a number of private sector individuals into her first administrator, at least her first two or three years. Uh, I will note that that wasn't the same under Jackson, interestingly enough. And I, I clearly believe the first county executive, because it, you're building a new form of government, it, I, I would I suspect it really has to come from private sector, someone who's built an organization. Um, otherwise, I, I, I agree with you, there's just a dearth of private sector individuals in our government and they could really make a world of change in how execution, just basic things, permits. Uh, um, I, I, I would offer that the whole idea of the lifelong politician needs to go yeah. and agree. that people need to see service as something that they do and then they go back to doing what they were doing. And certainly there needs to be some element of continuity so that we're not recreating the wheel and churning every four years or eight years. But when it comes to um, private sector engagement, there needs to be some sort of understanding between employers or business people that someone can go serve and still come back. Possibly things are going to change and roles are going to be different. But if we give people the leverage or the ability to go try something new and to put their resources in service to the greater good, they should be able to come back, much like we handle pregnancy leave, women leave, they come back to work. We need to come up with a way for people to go into public service using their skills and also into education well, using I'll, I'll their debate skills. this point too, <coughs> and I think you and I have debated this. It, it not only reaches in the government, it has to reach into our nonprofit sector because the oh, nonprofit sector in Cleveland is huge. 
and almost too big, in my opinion, because the more we spend, if we spent as much time on nonprofit as we did on for-profit endeavors, the city would look radically different. I, I'm a firm believer in that. We we put every time I hear someone, I want to do this in my life. I'm going to form a nonprofit. Like, no, don't uh, don't do that. Form a new company, create wealth. As my biggest <laughs> biggest issue right now in, in Cleveland. I would maintain that uh, because of the way we fund elections, that uh, corporations are so involved in in paying off uh, our, our officials, that we already have private industry in our government. <laughs> so be careful what you wish for. Hi, I'm Innovation Lab. My question, we went over some great things today. We talked about leadership, vision. <laughs> One thing we have not spoken of is the culture of Cleveland. And growing up in Cleveland, I went through the Cleveland Public Schools, it's always where self-hate so, you know, if, if someone comes from Florida, we ask them, oh my God, why did you move here? And, you know, and it's been that way since I was little. And as an emerging leader myself, I'm still hearing that today. So do you think that that will change? And if so, how can we change Cleveland's self-hating culture? Well, I would argue that we have a culture of self-loathing. I, uh, I don't talk to those people. I don't hang around those people. I think there's a certain elite in the business and in the old media that has these attitudes that they perpetuated since they still remember when the mayor's hair caught on fire and stuff that, you know, they did a study. That was Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson too. Yeah. It was our river that caught on fire. It was the river no, no, the and the mayor's, the mayor's <laughs> hair as well. It was Mayor Perk. That's right. But we did a study at, uh, I believe, when they were putting the Cleveland Plus campaign together when they wanted to go national and promote the region. And they asked people, do you have a positive, negative, or neutral view of Cleveland? It was neutral. Mm -hmm. It's not negative. Okay, so let's not honor those people that want to perpetuate the negativity. In fact, if you ask 90% of young people in this town, they are going to be very positively reinforced. Of course, the other 10% are probably have left or they're leaving. So, and, and that's okay too. It's a, yeah. Churn is not a problem. It's different too when you're talking about young people because it's not so much of I don't like Cleveland but I grew up in this place and I want to leave. That's very natural. So you know if you're 20 years old, 18 years old, you want to go and look at the world. Yes. I don't think you know even the talk about the brain drain and people leaving, you know if you're 22 years old and you've spent the last 22 years in Cleveland, I would you know hope that you would get out and look around and come back. Hmm. And, you know, I think that we could actually do some, a little bit of marketing on bringing people back because this is so family-friendly town and, like, I talked about all right. the things about mid-cities. So I haven't heard the, oh, my God, why did you move? I haven't heard that in, I'd say, a good 10, 15 years. You know what, we're always going to have that. I mean, when I was, I graduated uh, from high school in 1993, and there was a Cleveland 2000 campaign. And I was a graphic design, uh, that was my, my career track at that point, and I won the contest for the poster and $200 and a handshake with the mayor. Nice. Um, but back then, it was the same story. So here we are, what, uh, almost 20 years later, and we're still combating the same thing. I mean, Cleveland was the butt of jokes for a whole long time. It's not going to change overnight. Um, it, you know, there's something to be said for being able to look, look at your past and laugh at it. Um, but at the same time, you know, when people, you know, you know the you know we've got weather issues. I mean, there's stuff out outside of our control that we can't we can't do anything about. But it's the city we live in, and if you know if somebody makes a joke about us, it, yeah, it's great. You know, but you know, it, it's where I live and it's where my kids are, and it's the city that I've invested you know millions of dollars into my company. So you know, laugh at that. Well, I'm not from Cleveland, but I'll I'll, I'll tell you that everything great personally and professionally in my life has happened in Cleveland. I've been very blessed. And I, I think most people think I'm actually from here, you know, and so that's just uh, that's the warming sense I get from Cleveland, Ohio.